great American Bay Bay. Adam Cole wins in an impressive main event, charging up a return new NXT Women's Tag Team Champions and a concert that I did not expect. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talk Wrestling and we're reviewing NXT's The Great American Bash and we are starting. Um, my rapid came back negative, so it looks like I don't have COVID. So yay! I'm okay. And I feel a lot better. And I can talk. I can talk. I told Kyle not to watch my video yesterday because my vi was, my voice sounds like crap. But now I can talk, so now we're good. Let's talk about the great American bash. So, start off with and new. We had Zoe Starks and Io Shirai taking on the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, The Way, Indy Hartwell, Candice LeRae. In a stellar match and things were going great, the way it had control, and then all of a sudden the lights went out. And this was also really bad because it's raining really hard in New York and my satellite went out. So I had to literally go on USA streaming channel to watch the end of this. So the lights go out, the charger shows, it goes up to hundred percent, and all of a sudden it goes green, and then boom, a returning Tegan Knox. She's back. Finally. Thank God. Even though she worked a dark match on Raw two nights ago. So, Tegan Knox staying there, Candice LeRae gets distracted, and then Zoe Starks pins Indy Hartwell. And Zoe Starks and Io Shirai are your brand new NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. I have a lot of problems with this. One, this is the fourth new tag team who has won these titles since March? I think they just in March, February, around there. Um, that's a problem. <laughs> if they've only lasted a couple months, we should not have four new champions. Two, my biggest issue, this is a makeshift tag team. And I understand that, you know, we really don't have one with tag teams, which is why we really shouldn't have these tag titles in the first place. But just no. <laughs> um, I don't know where this is leading. I mean, I'm happy that, you know, Eo and Zoe have gold and, you know, good for Zoe. She finally got gold because Zoe's been really impressive. But I just feel like a real tag team should have defeated the way. I feel like they've done a really good job with those titles. And obviously now Candace is going to go on to feud with Tegan. And Beth Phoenix was very happy because at the end of this whole thing, Indy Harwell was like laying there and Dexter came out. So Index. Index is end game. Index is end game. So yeah, um, the match was really good. I like that Tegan returned. Don't know about the sending. I would rather see and still rather than end new. But from one tag team to another, we had MSK taking on Thatcher and Ciampa in the opening of the Great American Bash. Oh my god, this match is really good. So the one thing I don't understand is why the CWC just boos MSK. I love MSK. I think they're really talented. I think them going to NXT was a really good idea for them. And especially when, you know, they got signed. Yay. Um, because literally, their whole time in NXT was literally the Dusty Classic. They won the tag titles, now they're putting on bangers. So I don't understand why we hate them. If someone can explain that to me in the comments, that'd be very much appreciated. But this match was really good. There was a lot of close finishes. So Thatcher actually got, like, the most, as, as they say on what culture, the most I was saying moving all the sports entertainment, the surprise roll-up. So I must get one tall. This might lead to another match. I don't know. I mean, the next takeover is supposed to be the day after SummerSlam in Vegas, which when we get to Colin O'Reilly is what I'm expecting would be the third and final match of their series so maybe we see it there I don't know so but this was really good it was really impressive it was a great way to start the night so yay tag teams this concert though so Hit Row had their uh, celebratory party because as I swear I won the North American Championship last week I didn't think we were going to get a whole concert. <laughs> I was kind of taken aback by this, especially because for a hot second I forgot the segment was happening. 
So I've seen a lot of things on Twitter, like people were really upset about this because it was obvious that they were lip syncing and it was obvious at some part where they were actually singing because you could hear it in the background, but then people were like, oh, you know, like they're just, you know, they're always being safe. So I thought this was a little long, especially because the only thing I got from it is like, okay, Swerve got the gold and then the other two are going to go after the tag titles, but then they were calling out like Thatcher and Chamba, and I'm just like, bro, they already lost. Like, just call it MSK. So, I don't know. I thought this was a little long, especially because I feel like Cole and O'Reilly could put on any good match, but I feel like if they were given just a little bit more time, it would have been a little bit better. But that's just me, just because I've seen this match in Ring of Honor, and I've seen it go to like 45 minutes to an hour. So that's just the Ring of Honor hard in me critiquing. But, like I said, it. I just felt like it was too long. I understood the purpose of it, like that's the whole Kimmy character is just like concert, rapping, recording artists, the whole shebang shebang. But you know, I thought I just thought it should be a little shorter. But that may well before we get to the main event, we can talk about that Cameron Grimes is the butler now. So it was Ellen Knight versus Cameron Grimes and if Cameron Grimes lost, then he would be Ellen Knight's butler. And this match this match was really good. I actually prefer this match better than the match that they had to take over in your house. I don't know if maybe because of the latter that I prefer this match better. But it was really good. But my only problem with it is I okay, so if I had to assume, I think the last time we did like kinda like a butler match was when Nikki and Bree wrestled each other. And like Brie had to do everything for Nikki in like 2013, 2014 around there. But there was like, Nikki made Brie do something I think like right after the match. Where this was just like, oh yeah, camera grabs, that has to be the butler. And like nothing ever happened. So for me, I would have had, I don't know what, maybe like, at, like right before the main event, like a backstage segment. Where like Grimes is walking and LA Knight takes him and like his car is like completely like... Go, like garbage dirty and then like Grimes have to clean it like that's something I would have done just something to lead up to the fact that he's a butler and not just oh yeah this is it okay next segment <laughs> that's the only thing like I said the match was really good and I I've heard this match better than your house but I would have liked the payoff there but I think the other thing too is I just don't understand what we're waiting for with Grimes because Grimes is completely over and the CWC also hates LA Knight which I also don't understand either because I'm a huge LA Knight fan but I, I just feel that when they're going to pull the trigger on Grimes, it's going to be too late. This is my fear, and this is my fear with a breaker too, but luckily it paid off because that's another company. So I'm hoping that if this third match is going to be at the TakeOver in Vegas, that's when you're going to pull the trigger. But now let's talk about this main event. So, like I said, if the concert was a little shorter and they gave this match more time, I probably would have preferred it a little bit better just because, you know, I've seen them have longer matches. But the time that they were given, I thought they made the best of it. Riley and Cole cannot have a bad match whatsoever. I think they're two of those wrestlers are just incapable of doing it. And this match had great back and forth action. There was both viable reasons for each man to win. But obviously, Cole won! Thank God. Woo! So now we're 1-1, one, one, so I'm assuming that this is going to lead to a grudge match. Now for me, I would have loved if Adam got the title and then like this is how Adam goes up to the main roster. Like he passes the torch down to Kyle, Adam goes to the main roster and then Kyle's just carrying NXT for the next year. But I'm assuming we're not going that way. Meaning that next week on the random episode of NXT we have Cross and Gargano with Samoa Joe as the special guest referee. But this match, this match was good, you know, it made sense for Cold and Wind for them to have the grudge match. I'm assuming, like, when everyone's on Twitter, too, like, it is going to be a loser leave the next team match. Like, that's the only way you could pretty much go, because you had the unsanctioned, then you had the regular match, so, like, what else are you going to do? So, and I'm going to assume that Riley is going to win the last match, and that's how Cole's going to get brought up. He's going to get brought up in the draft, and I'm really excited for that. But I thought, I thought it was, I thought Grand American Bash was good. Like, I didn't think it was bad. It's just, like, very nitpicking things. And I'm like, oh, this would have been a little bit better. This would have made a lot more sense. But I just don't understand, like, why Cross and Gargano was on a random app. They could have definitely, well, I mean, I guess I didn't want to overshine Kyle and O'Reilly. Because that's what happened at NXT TakeOver, Stand and Deliver. Was that Balor and Cross was supposed to be an event. And then they changed it to Cole and O'Reilly. Because, like, everyone was so focused on Cole and O'Reilly. And no one cared about Cross and Balor. So I'm guessing it's the same thing. I didn't want to overshadow. But I feel like it's so random. <laughs> but I also am predicting that Cross is going to, like, hit Joe. And then Joe is going to screw Cross. And that's how Gargano is going to win the title. 
That's probably not going to happen, but if it does, it would make so much more sense storyline. Woo! But that's it for me. Make sure to like this video, comment what y'all thought about the Great American Bash, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. Click the bell for notifications, subscribe. Um, head over to my channel tomorrow, because you'll have your Ring of Honor review for Women Division Wednesdays. And then make sure you tune in, because after Dynamite, Kyle and Tiff will be live reviewing Dynamite on the AP. And then I'll have my Dynamite review also up Thursday. So tune in for that too. And that's it for me. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye.